Well, hello there, everybody. And how is everybody doing today? <laughs> I am so delighted to hear it. And me, well, I'm ready to go bucking on a bronco. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, oh, the hat? Well, does that give you a little clue where we're going to go today? <laughs> I thought it would. Yes. We are going to go down to the great state of Texas. Texas, as they call it. <laughs> you know, I used to live in Texas many years ago. I lived for a short while in Austin. By the way, did you know that Austin, Texas is the capital of the great Lone Star State? Mm. I also lived in Corpus Christi, right on the Gulf Coast. Saw a hurricane down there. That was something that will wake you up in the morning. <laughs> and of course, I spent a little time around El Paso. Wonderful people in Texas. Great people. Easy going, very friendly. Very laid back and it suited me just fine. Well, I got a message from Flight Officer Harry. And he wrote me to say, I think this flight is pretty short, he said. And he said, Dallas-Fort Worth, KDFW, to KPHX Phoenix in Arizona. So that's what we'll do today. We'll make that flight from Big D in Texas all the way to Phoenix, Arizona. And I looked it up and found that American Airlines does that route regularly, in fact, two or three times a day. And we'll be following American Airlines flight 520. That's AA520. This is the third flight that I've made in America or in the North American continent in the past three weeks. I started out with a flight in Huntington, West Virginia, going down to Charleston. Then I had a flight that originated in Toronto, Canada, going down to Newark, New Jersey. And then last week, I did a flight from Kennedy Airport in New York up to Boston. So this week is the last flight I'm going to be making in the North Americas for a while. Next week, I'm going to go to South Africa. Yes. So we're going to make this a good flight today, a great flight. I've got some great scenery for the airports today. Dallas-Fort Worth, that's KDFW. That scenery is beautiful scenery and it's made by FS Dream Team. Beautiful scenery. And the Phoenix scenery, that's KPHX, is made by Flight Beam. So if you're ready, Aviation Officer Harry, are you ready? Then let's go over into pre-flight and check out the weather and make our flight plan. Okay? See you in pre-flight. Well, here we are in FlightAware, and we're looking at American Airlines Flight 520. Here you can see the other designators for this particular flight. This is expected to depart in 3 hours and 29 minutes. Departing from Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas, and it's apparently departing from gate A25. And it's arriving, the scheduled arrival gate in Phoenix is A7. We'll try to follow that as 
closely as we can. Here's the scheduled flight route going from Dallas down here. Here you can see this is the border with Mexico, so it goes pretty close to the border and then goes into Phoenix right here. Taxi time is expected to be 17 minutes. It's a big airport is Dallas, my goodness. And taxi time here is 11 minutes in Phoenix. Now, the part that I want to have a look at here is this, because in America, they do publish the routes. And that is the route that we will be following today. Now, looking over here at flight radar, I've got up here, as you can see, this is flight radar 24, and I'm at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, and I'm looking here at the upcoming flight to Phoenix, the AA520. I looked into the background in flight information to see the departure point. Here's the departure point at the airport. This is Dallas Airport, Dallas-Fort Worth. And here you can see it's parked in this part of the northern terminal block. So that's where the A gates are located. Then it's departure. And by the way, TCAS gives us all this information. So here's the departure. It came down here, crossed, went down the taxiway, and then took off in that direction just like that. Now, we'll be parked somewhere very, very close to this in order to mimic this flight and follow it as closely as possible. As for our arrival, let's have a look at that. For this, the flight came in on this runway, which is runway eight. So it came in on runway eight, departed here, and went into this parking area at the airport. So we will try to follow that and come in at the same block, because this is the A stands right here at Sky Harbor. Okay, now look at Windy. Here we are. This is... Dallas-Fort Worth. Dallas is over here and Fort Worth and the airport is in between right there. Wind is 230 degrees at 6 knots. Visibility 10 statute miles. No cloud under 12,000 feet. Temperature minus 1 degree. Wow, that's cold. Altimeter settings is 30. .5. Four three inches of mercury is a little high, so they've got a high pressure over the area. That is what's keeping the sky clear and the temperatures low. But look, it's VFR, so we are in good condition today. Over here, this is the airport. Uh, section that we will be in will be we'll try to get a 25 I don't know if we'll get that and I'm not sure with it being a crosswind which one of the runways we will actually be assigned to so that will depend upon air traffic control looking at our destination here we are. This is Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport right here. See this? This is the airport. I used to live in Phoenix too, by the way. And the wind is coming from 110 degrees, a little different down here. Visibility 10 statute miles. Again, no clouds under 12,000 feet. Temperature is a warm 14 degrees. Oh, I like that. That's good. Altimeter is 3022, again, high pressure. 
So there's a high pressure area over this entire region that is keeping the sky clear, temperatures down, but visibility is good. Looking at the runways, if we come in to the same runway, runway 8, then we will try to follow it and go into this same terminal building right here and one of these parking stands. Because it looks like we'll be coming in on runway 8 if everything holds together. All right, let's go in and make our flight plan. So we are Ryanair, we are 186. We are departing from KDFW and we're going to go to KPHX. And there's the alternate. I'm not sure uh, uh, what that one is, but we'll have to look at that in a moment. There's our airframe and there's our registration, E-I-E-N-I. -E Cruise Profile 6, got a scheduled flight time of 2 hours 40 minutes. Well, this is big country and it's a big state is Texas. We're going to be crossing from the middle of Texas, going all the way across New Mexico and into the middle, lower part of Arizona. So we've got quite a ways to go. This is giving us a departure runway 3-1 right. Well, we'll see whether we get that. But here's runway 8 as we thought it would be. Passengers, well, we are full, of course. We're always full. And it's all because we have one ton of complimentary champagne and caviar. Isn't that great? Down here, there's the flight route just exactly as we saw it on flight aware and here this is the this is the entire route there's dallas all the way across houston is down here san antonio and Right here on this coastline, that's where Corpus Christi is. I used to live there. And then over here is El Paso. So it looks like our route takes us right over the VOR at El Paso. Across the bottom end of New Mexico, sweeping up from Tucson and then into Phoenix. And here... Prescott. Ah, KPRC is Prescott, and that will be our alternate in case anything goes pear-shaped, which we hope it won't. All right, let's go up here and we will save the flight and generate the flight plan. Let's see what information we get. All right, here we go. KDFW to Phoenix, Prescott. Oh, and we're flying at flight level 340 today. Airtime is 2 hours and 11 minutes. Block fuel is 8,914. Planned optimum flight level according to the uh, programmers at SimBrief who know exactly what to allow us here for our particular aircraft. So looking down here, here we are, there's Ryanair 186. There's our cruise altitude. And right here, that's our flight route. Here's Prescott, Arizona, that's our alternate. We uh, need to know that we're cost index six. We need to know the average wind and speed. Here is our fuel for today that we're going to need to make sure is on board. Right here are the reserves that we need. And that's for the trip and the taxi. No tankering recommended, it says. 
looking down here, this is the official flight route for the whole thing. And if we follow this exactly, and there are no hiccups, then I'll put this in the description box below so that you can follow this yourself. Now looking at the descent information, here you can see at flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. That's the wind direction and speed and the temperature. At 15,000 feet, that's the wind speed, direction and temperature. And at 10,000 feet, we will need to put that in. And notice, when we get down to 10,000 feet, we start to get some positive temperatures. So icing conditions are not likely to be affecting us today. Zooming all the way down now to have a look at the weather profile. Let's see what it looks like. Well, there are some indicators here of some frontal movements and but it seems to be generally blowing in that direction. I don't think that we're going to have any difficulty at all today with weather. And looking at this, this is the altitude that we'll be flying at. Ah, well, well, not exactly a headwind, but it's going to be pretty much crosswind all the way to about here. And then it turns into a headwind once we cross over into New Mexico and then go into Arizona. So we can expect some headwinds from El Paso. Here's El Paso down here. Oh well. Here's our cruise profile starting out here from Dallas Fort Worth. And there's our flight altitude cruise. This dotted line, this is the troposphere. And we, it's been described as a sort of a border between temperature uh, areas. Uh, if you notice here, we've got minus 54, minus 52 over here, and minus 61, and then minus 59 higher. So it's a sort of a temperature inversion. We're not going to be getting up that high. And then our descent is all the way down here into Phoenix. Yep, and these are the Rocky Mountains. So there'll be a little bit of elevation that we'll be seeing en route. Okay, we have our flight plan. Let's go on into Navigraph charts and assemble the chart plates that we're going to need. Well, here we are in Navigraph and here you can see a map of the western, southwestern part of the United States. Right here we've got Dallas-Fort Worth and Here's Waco, Texas, San Angelo. There's Amarillo, been there too. And there's Roswell. Do you know what Roswell is famous for? Well, if you're a sci-fi fan, that is where the famous Area 51 is. <laughs> Alamogordo, of course, and Las Cruces, famous, of course, for the atomic bomb testing. Here's San Antonio, and right there is Austin, that's the capital of the great state of Texas. Corpus Christi down here. Right here, Ciudad Juarez, and across from it is El Paso. There's Las Cruces, Tucson, and there's Phoenix. So there's a little bit of geography of the area that we are going to be flying over. So flights. Let's go new flight from SimBrief and bring the one in that we just created. Let's go to Dallas-Fort Worth. We're going to need to pin the airport down below. 
we're going to need to know parking gates and coordinates for these terminals. So let's have a look at that. Here it is. Here's the A terminal right here, terminal A. And here are the coordinates that we will need. I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Hopefully, we'll try to get A25, which is down here, so that we can follow exactly that flight that is about to depart. So we've got that. And we need the this departure plate. And I'm going to pin that departure plate down below. So departing on the runway, it's got, got us departing on this runway here, 3 1 right. Let's hope we get it. And then it takes us all the way across. Right, going into Phoenix, Sky Harbor, we'll open up the charts there, go to the airport. We need the airport and we'll need the parking gates. We're coming in on runway 08. So we will need the ILS localizer for this. And let's bring that up. Here you can see that we're going to be coming in from the south. And then somewhere up here, we'll be making our intercept at one of these points here. Let me bring in the arrival star. I'm going to pin that. So we're coming in all the way in through this way. Here you can see the, the route coming across the southern part of the state. If we're going to be coming in here, then probably if we can intercept Sate for a radar fix. Let's see what it gives us. So we're going to be coming in. We're on the pinning one. And we're coming in ILS to a runway 08. And we want, we'll intercept the Ilke, right there. How does that look? Look good to you? We swing up here, swing around, and then join the final for the approach into Phoenix right there at the initial fix right at Ilke. Okay. All right. Let me clean this up. We have our plates. Unless anything goes wrong, we are all set to go. Well, there you are, Flight Officer Harry. Do come in and have a seat. Do you have the latest in Ryanair pilot's headgear? <laughs> I wonder if Mr. O'Leary will go along with this. Hmm. Well, who knows? But I shan't be needing it for this particular flight because it's going to be nice and warm when we get to Phoenix. Now then, take your seat. Don't forget to adjust your seat, buckle up, and we'll get ourselves ready. I've already been around and I've kicked the tires and made sure we have the fuel on board. Everything is serviced and ready to go. And this is incredibly detailed airport I've got here. This, of course, is by FS Dream Team. They are the ones who put this one together. And, of course, there's the usual kamikaze vehicles around. Let me show you what we've got. I'm going to play tourist here. And there's the tower that you can see out there. And there's actually... I think it's a monorail. I'm not sure what this is. These <laughs> wasn't like this when I was here back in the 70s. So this is all quite new. And it is, I've got good frame rate. I've got 18 on the frame rate here. 
So I'm in good, good, good condition. So that's the airport scenery. Oh, and there it is. Look at that. My goodness. And then it will go off down over there somewhere. So there's plenty of activity at this airport by FS Dream Team. And we are right here. This is gate A25. Exactly the same one for the flight that we are following. So we're going to be right with them. We're going to be ghosting them the whole way. Okay, first thing of course that we do is we turn on the power, make sure that we've got 26 volts in the battery, and then we turn on the fuel pumps and we start the APU. The APU, if you remember, is located in the rear of the aircraft and it's going to provide us with 115 volts of electricity in just a moment. But more than that, it's going to also provide us heat. It's got a heat exchanger in it and it's going to blow that air into the cabin and warm us up. The engine gas temperature has risen, the oil pressure light, low oil pressure light has gone off, so we're looking good. <clears throat> and now it's stabilizing. As soon as it stabilizes, this light will come on blue and that will tell me that I have 115 volts. There it is. Good. We now have 115 volts showing up here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the IRS, which is the GPS system. And there are two on here. We have two just in case there's a problem with one. We can always navigate with the other. Uh, I've got this switch to APU generator. I'm going to turn on the emer emergency exit lights. These are the lights that go down the center aisle and also over the emergency exits and no smoking fasten seat belts oh such power over here i'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat and it is a cold day so i am going to turn on the probes to get them good and warm here's the low the hydraulic pumps i'm turning on now these lights indicate the forward service hatch is open and the equipment, that's the air stairs, they are down. Now over here I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, then the recirculating fans and I'm going to turn on the packs and listen. There's the air rushing through and filling the cabin with pressurized air. Right, now that we've got the <clears throat> main board looking good, the next thing we need to do is we need to program the FMC. Now over here, first thing that we need to do is we check the air rack and the program data that there are no errors. Go into the position and we are of course at KDFW. And that's our initial position and we are at gate A25 so we'll put that in and it comes up with the exact location so we will put that into there and now we are located geographically on the earth's surface now we go into the route we're starting out at KDFW, KDFW, we're going to go to KPHX, KPHX, we are of course Ryanair, RYR, and we're number 186. <laughs> go down to the next page, and this is where we put in our flight route right in here. So our first 
Waypoint is C I K A N. So C I K A N. And then we go direct to E W M. E W M. And then we go direct to D R R B R. So D R R and B R. And that is our root. So we activate that, execute. Go to fix. This is our loca location that we're going to go to. K B H X. We need a four mile circle and we'll need a 10 mile circle and a 30 mile circle. Go to the descent, go to forecast. Now transition levels in the United States are the same as transition altitudes, which is 180. So 180, I'll put that in there. Then we need the cabin altitude, the Altitude and wind speed for 200, flight level 150, and for 10,000 feet. Q&H at our destination is 1023. 1023. And then we'll find the information for our descent from the charts at Flight level 200, it is 299 and 16. So 299 and 16. At 150, it is 330 at 8. 330 at 8. And at 10,000 feet, it is 25 and 2. So 25 and 2. Quite a shift in the wind direction there you notice as well as the wind speed execute that go to departures now this is where we first need to contact and listen into ATIS to see what we have so ATIS here is 123.77 so 123.77 Dallas Fort Worth International Airport Information Alpha 1801 Zulu Wind 227 at 6 Visibility greater than 20 miles Sky condition clear temperature minus 1 2 point minus 9 altimeter 1030 landing and departing runway 17 left runway 17 right runway 17 center runway 18 right and runway 18 left VFR aircraft, say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact. You have Alpha. Well, we have Alpha. And if we get our the, run, the runway that we want, then that will be 17 right. Let's see if we can get that. I'm going to contact ground control now and ask them for clearance to depart to the west. DFW ground, Ryanair 186 with Bravo request taxi to the active west departure. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short at runway 17 right via taxiway Kilo Echo Foxtrot contact tower on 134 point minor when ready. Taxi hold short runway 17 right via taxiway Kilo Echo Foxtrot Ryanair 186 we have our clearance to go from runway 17 right. Now, I noticed that all the folks are already on board. That's our self-loading cargo, you know. So I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the hatch. So 17 right is our departure. And we will be using the Westex 2. And there it is, there's the West X2 departure. And we are using the CCAN transition. So execute that. Go back to departures and arrivals. 
we're looking at ILS 08 coming in, so I'm going to put that in there. We'll be using the the Ping One arrival. <coughs> there it is. There's the Ping One arrival 08. Put that in there, and our transition is going to be the Elke right there. So I'm going to execute that. Now I'm going to go to legs and I'm going to switch this plate to plan so that we can see our route all the way through and look for discontinuities. So I push this button here to the step and there's our departure looking good all the way through there and there's our first discontinuity right after DRRVR. So I'm going to bring the ping in one up and now step through that. Let's see if it brings it together. There's the ping, there's wigwam for coming up now. There's the 10 mile circle. So there's Neil. And we're going to just bring that up. So here you can see the, the route is coming up, goes all the way around and we've gone from Neil straight around to join up to Ilke for the final approach in there. And that is what this particular little program does. So I'm going to click back to map. I'm going to make this one the weather radar and activate the data and for you Harry I'm going to put terrain over here just in case we run into mountains and activate the data and then up here I'm going to activate the your damper and the light has gone off so we're good on that now our departure is going to be on runway 17 right so that is 176 degrees on our course setting. So 176. I'll put 176 in here. And I'll do the same one for you over here. 176. That's our course heading for our departure. And our altitude will be flying today at 340, so that's 34,000 feet. So I'll put 34,000 feet in here in anticipation. Up here, I now have to put 34,000 feet into our pressurization. This is our flight altitude up here. And the elevation at our destination of Phoenix is 1135 feet so I have to go and put 1150 in here so 1150 that's the closest to that figure because these are in 50 foot increments okay so far right now we're ready to go ahead and perform the initialization. So push this. Our plan fuel for today is 2,482 kilograms for reserves, 5,798 for the trip and taxi. That comes to 8,280 or 8.3. 8 8.3 8 is our plan for today. And with the fuel, the reserves, 2.5, 2.5. And then I'm going to double click this and it will calculate the information for me. Put in that, 6. We're going to be flying at 340. Our cruise wind is going to be 318 at 37. So 318 at 37. Transition altitude, remember in the US is flight level 180, so I'll put that in. Execute. 
n1 limit it's zero we're not going to do any d rates or anything like that would we don't bother with noise abatement or any of that sort of stuff so i'm just going to do the zero on that and accept it as it is take off we'll do tech flaps 10 double click it gives us the center of gravity and the value that we need on the trim wheel press each of these one time and it will give us the v1 rotation speed and liftoff speed is 147 so i'm going to put 147 now in here okay so we're looking good now i'm going to put the flight directors on and i'm going to check that we have green lights which we do on both of those so now i'm going to arm the throttle and i'm going to switch to vor one on both of us and that localizer when we get there is going to be 11 1.75 i'm going to switch this to rto in preparation now we're ready to do the checklist We've already done pre-flight, all of that has been done, so fuel is correct, windows locked both. See, they're locked. <laughs> Seat belt signs, they're on, door lights are out, check. MCP is programmed correct, takeoff thrust is done, speed set, CDU pre-flight is complete, rudder air long trim is done taxi and briefing now where we are here we're going to need to go back and we need to go in that direction and then up that way to get to our departure point on the runway to get to the threshold of the runway so we'll need to push back tail to the left nose to the right okay and now the anti-collision light, it goes on. Right, we are set to ask the nice people on the ground for pushback. So, here we go. And we want nose to the right, 90 degrees, select the tug. Right, are you set? Any questions? Which engine would you like to start today? Would you like to start engine number one, which is on this side, or engine number two, which is on that? Engine one, you'd like to start with engine number one first? Good, then I'm gonna switch this to generator one so that we can monitor the voltage as we start today. So here we go. Cockpit to ground. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready to push. Tail to the left. Parking brakes off. Parking brakes off. Okay. Attendance. We are moving. So please secure. Brakes released. TCAS is now on. Released. Here we go. All right, starting engine number one, switching to ground, and I'm turning now the blowers off so that we can gener uh, put it towards the engines. Over here, the start valve has opened. Here you can see the N2 climbing very nicely. When this gets to 24, I'm going to introduce the fuel. There we go. And let's see what we can do with that. I'm keeping my eye open for kamikaze vehicles. They're, they're lumbering around with intent. And you can hear the engine spooling up. And there's the engines. Okay. Checking up here, we have 115 volts. Now switching to engine number two. Start valve has opened. 
it's starting to spin up there's the N2 spin it's spinning the fans at the moment when that gets to 24 I'll introduce the fuel push back complete parking brake please parking brake is on fuel is going in Break now set. with the fuel in I'm now looking for the engine gas temperature it started to ignite it's building up I'll be looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. All right, steering pin is disconnected. Watch for the slip release. There it's gone out. We're looking good. Flip. And there it is. It's building up very nicely. So now I'm switching to generator 2 to make sure that we have 115 volts showing up here. There we are. We've got the good engine ignition. We are ignited now I'm waiting just for a moment for it to stabilize and this little red tick mark to go off and that will tell me that we have there we go we have good power now coming from the main engines so I'm switching now to the main engines for power turning the air conditioning or in our case heating back on APU bleed off and APU off. Now I'm going to turn on the taxiway lights. The ground clear, crew has cleared and just check across the board that everything is looking good. All right, going to go to flaps 10 and we'll do our after start checklist. So generators are on, probe heat is on, anti ice not required it is a beautiful day out here today isolation valve is correct engine start levers idle detent flight deck door closed and locked recall check flight controls check flaps we have green light stabilizer trim is correct 4.7 auto brake lever is RTO check Speed brake lever down and detent. Ground equipment is clear. We are ready for take uh, taxi. And I'll verify the. Okay, need to make one small change. 148 for our V2. Okay. Everything all right, Harry? Looking good? All the vehicles out of the way, look at this. They are loitering, they're looking for victims. Go on, get out of it. Look at him there. Well, we have to go down there and pretty much follow that aircraft. So, brake is off. Let's apply a little power to get ourselves unstuck. And let's hope that we don't have any incidents with that American Airlines vehicle there. And there's another one coming. Wow. Well, they really do load this up. This is FS Dream Team and it really is a magnificent bit of scenery. Just look at the detail here. I've also got all the grass activated, so you can see grass here. Just activated the the Navigraph charts which are now appearing down at the side so you can see where we are for our taxi.
this taxiway right here. says watch out there's 
That's a useful feature. The lights have just turned red until that aircraft clears the runway. Well, what do you know? That's something new I didn't know before. All right, here we go then. N1 power. We have good power. Toga buttons are pushed. And now we are rolling.
to make our approach onto runway 8 at Phoenix. We've been... I already had the ATIS on, so I knew that we were fine with the runway that we had chosen. And just a moment ago, I contacted the tower to get landing instructions, and we have been given landing permission for runway 8. So we are on course for that. Right now we are beginning to slow up a little bit because we are 15 DME miles and the airport is right out there. But we have to go out there, come around and come in that direction to land on the runway 8. So there's the airport, it's out there just a little bit. But we're doing fine. Everything is set. Tells me a little drag is required. So we'll be going around. We're coming up on Legacy, then Vistal, and then Neil. When we get to Neil, that's when we'll swing around and intercept the uh, final. Right, I'm on flaps two at the moment, and going now to flaps five. I have the main lights on, seatbelt signs are on, I have 7, 8, 78 degrees for our approach set there. <coughs> Decision height barometer set to one three six eight. Well, oh, time to do a little bit of tourist stuff, eh?
we are now downwind for landing on runway 08. This is the downwind leg. We're intercepting the down, right downwind. And I'm going to switch now to the approach plate. And 
Heading right down. Final. We are on course for final. We have a crosswind. And we are 10 DME miles for landing. I have got two white and two red directly ahead.
crew is released to go to work. Now the way I look at it, we've got to go out here and down that way until we get to the Terminal 4 area. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and do that. This is by flight beam and it is really, really detailed airport. Now, I'm showing 1920 on my frame rate, which is very good. And consider that this is 4K resolution. And I've got all the stops pulled out. I mean, I've got all the detail that I can think of. And there's, there's the main terminal buildings. That's Terminal 3. So we continue along here until we get to Charlie 9. When we get, this is Charlie 8. So we'll continue until we get to Charlie 9, then we turn in, and then we'll look for A7. Let me see if I can find A7 on this. Oh, A7 is on the other one. Then I need to go to Charlie 10. Charlie 10. This is absolutely delightful. I'm going to see if I can't take some video while steering with my feet. That's the FBO side of the airport right there. This is Bravo and we want Charlie 9. Now Charlie 9 when it comes up we'll go one more and then we'll be at Charlie 10. Now there, there's the terminals. Um, satellites that we want. We don't want that first one, we want the second one and we need to be at the other side of the second terminal. Here we are, we're coming here up on, we're still on the Bravo taxiway and this is Charlie 9. And oh, look at that. The kamikazes are already gathering. They're sensing they've got a target that they can ha, attack. In other words, me. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, this is Charlie 10 coming up. To land runway seven right, world travel one zero six seven. And then we should look for Alpha Seven. All right, we turn down here. Stick your hand out, would you please, Harry? Ha! Thank you. <laughs> All right, turn down here. And I understand it, that uh, it should be on the right here. So let's see if we can find the markings for Alpha 7. That's 11. Which one is this? That's three. Here we 
go. Here's this is Alpha Seven. So turning in, turning right in here. and 24 minutes for our flight time today ladies and gentlemen and there they go doors open equipment's down and they're already leaving good now all I have to do now is do this fuel off battery off and shutdown is complete right Well, we made it, Harry. We did all right. Nice smooth landing onto runway eight. Still, there was a bit of a crosswind that uh, can catch you by surprise in this valley. You get the winds, they eddy round because of the mountains. They don't always behave like you think you, you expect them to. I've had a few interesting landings here in the past. Anyway, we're here. I hope you enjoyed the flight. It was a long flight, but it was a great place for taking off. I mean, Dallas-Fort Worth, beautiful airport scenery. And here, this airport scenery made by Flight Beam is really terrific. So we've got some very good sights. Now, this is the last American flight I've got on the list for a while. From here, I go to South Africa. <laughs> so next week, we're flying South Africa. And Harry, thank you so very much for making the suggestion and inviting me to make this flight. I look forward to flying again with you. And everyone else, I will see you next week in South Africa, okay? With Ryanair 186. Bye.